Hey guys, hope you are going well. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about cardio, okay, or conditioning, um, and how to be able to boost that in six weeks to be able to help with your race fitness. Um, so hope to be able to give you guys a ton of knowledge in this live stream today, um, just on the cardio and conditioning aspect of things. Um, we'll just wait a little bit for a few people to be able to jump on. Hope everyone's had a great weekend. Um, I heard there's been plenty of rain for you guys over east again, so probably not much riding for, for too many people over there. Um, so today we're going to be focusing on cardio, conditioning. Okay, That's the, uh, the important factor that a lot of racers want to, to know how to improve, um, and that's exactly what I'm going to be able to tell you and give you today so that you guys can start implementing and getting results. So the, the first thing that we want to note with cardio, with our conditioning, is that we want to be able to mimic the intensity of our training on the, or our racing on the weekend with our training during the week. So the first thing to be able to note with that is being able to, to distinguish the two types of cardio or conditioning. So number one, we have steady state cardio. Steady state cardio is where you're doing a particular uh, repetitive exercise. Okay, so we're talking like uh, cycling, swimming, running, walking. Um, for an extended duration, for a long period of time, okay? And usually during these, these types of activities, our intensity will be relatively the same. So yes, it will fluctuate up and down, but because the duration is so long, uh, the intensity will be relatively consistent throughout the whole time. The other uh, type of conditioning type of cardio is interval training. Interval training is where we use short bursts of high intensity activity. So we're talking about, um, say, uh, a hard burst of activity, then we rest. Then a hard burst of activity, then we rest. Using those, uh, you're using the same steady state cardio activity. So we can use like cycling, running, walking, swimming, rowing. Okay. They're the two different types. Now, the, the, the important thing is distinguishing which type we actually need for racing. Okay. So when we're racing, when we're out on the track, there will be parts of the track which require more physical exertion, more power, more strength than other parts of the track, okay? So we might go through a rough whoop section, through a rough corner, we're up on the pegs where we're using a whole heap of energy and strength, okay? Likewise, on the other end of the spectrum, there's going to be parts of the track that require a lot less physical exertion. So it's all about going over a jump, long straights, okay? Um, smoother areas of the track. Maybe it's a big banked corner, okay, which has a, a nice big berm that isn't too rough, um, where we're not exerting ourselves as much. So what we need to note here is that the levels of intensity during the race, during each lap are actually changing. So we have parts of the track which are, are very high, okay, um, in terms of physical exertion. We have parts of the track that are much lower. So what we're doing is we have fluctuations here in intensity, up, down, up, down, up, down, from corner to corner to corner to corner to jump to corner, okay? There's always different uh, levels of intensity which are fluctuating up and down. So now that we know that information, we can best reflect the level of intensity from our race day with our training during the week. Now, obviously, that matches into interval training. So interval training is short, sharp bursts of high-intensity activity where we're using bursts of high-intensity activity followed by rest. So I'll give you an example. Uh, what you would do is, I'll use a rowing example in the rowing machine. Jump on the rowing machine. Do 10 seconds on. No, sorry, 30 seconds on. Absolutely flat out, as fast as you can possibly go on the roll, followed by 30 seconds of complete rest. Repeat that 10 times. So that's a total of 10 minutes, okay? Um, a total of five minutes working, five minutes resting over the whole 10 minutes. Now, the most important thing here is that we're replicating the intensity, okay? And we do that through having those high levels of intense training. The only way that we can replicate intensity is by having rest, Okay, what you will notice is that with constant duration, okay, when we're doing, say, a one-hour activity, we're doing steady-state cardio, um, our intensity declines because there's no rest in there. We can't work at higher, higher, um, higher levels of intensity because we have such a long uh, duration to be able to cover. So with the interval training, because we have those rest periods, that allows you to rest, to recover, for you to re-energize, ready to go for the next round, which means that you can actually hit that next round a shit ton harder because you've had that rest period there to be able to recover from, which is going to be able to help with your next effort. And this is exactly what happens out in racing. We have one part of the track which uses a whole heap of energy, okay? Then we have a, a rest period, and then we have our um, next lot of or next intense bout, but we can only make that, that next intense bout as intense as the amount of rest that we have before that. So the more rest we have before, the more efficient we are before that, the harder we're able to go in that next bit. And that's how we replicate our training with conditioning. So we have our um, 
uh, we've worked out what intensity we need. Now, when we're using the steady state cardio stuff, that does the complete opposite of what we need to be able to work towards for our training on the weekend. So what's actually happening is we have the same level of intensity when we do the long duration stuff, um, which does the complete opposite of, because when we're racing, we have high intensity, low intensity, high intensity, low intensity, high intensity, low intensity, constantly fluctuating. Whereas when we're going cycling, when we're going running, when we're going running and we're doing that for hours, what actually happens is the intensity is constant. So when we go out on the track, we tend to replicate the type of training we've done during the week. So our intensity is not there. We're not able to ride as hard. We're not able to go as fast. We're not able to ride as hard for long. Uh, what you'll find is that you'll be very, very good at riding around the 70 or 80% mark for a long period of time. But when you're asked to work at 80, 90, close to 100%, you can't do it. You don't have that level of intensity because you program your nervous system to operate well at lower levels of intensity for a long duration, okay? So if you're a, a marathon runner, for example, um, or a distance athlete, an endurance athlete, then that would be awesome. And I suppose the key distinction here is noting that motocross races, okay, or even road races, even enduro races, aren't endurance athletes, okay? Endurance athletes are people that use a steady state cardio activity that are using very, very light weights, okay? Whether that's their body weight or very light external weight. So if we're talking cycling, they're using like a 10 kilo bike, obviously running and swimming and just using body weight, okay? Same with rowing, okay? It's all body weight. The key distinction here um, is that when we are racing on the weekend, we're not endurance athletes. We're actually strength athletes. And the reason that we're strength athletes is because we have a 100 kilo bike, Okay. On average, most, most bikes will weigh, or obviously 250, 450, are going to weigh around the 100 kilo mark. So we need to get you to a high level of strength that's going to allow you to be able to move that 100 kilos around for an extended duration. And the only way to be able to do that is being able to focus on strength, number one, but also being able to focus on intensity, your cardio conditioning side of things as well, using that interval training. Because if we're not used to those high intensity bouts, then what's going to happen is uh, we're going to get out on the track. We're going to just circulate. We're just going to be moving around. We're not really going to be performing too well or performing anywhere near our peak. So we need to make sure that we are, we're we replicating that intensity. We're not using the steady state cardio stuff because it's going to zap your speed. Um, yes, it may make you better at, at riding longer races at a lesser intensity, but most of you who are racing don't want to race at a lesser intensity. You want to have the same intensity. You want to have that, that um, hectic pace, but you want to be able to hold that for as long as you can. And the only way to do that is to be able to train those same modalities. And we do that through being able to incorporate interval training. Um, so that's the, the best way to do it. So that's just a sample workout there that I gave you guys. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, okay? Remember, it's not the total workload that's important. It's the intensity that you bring to that workload. And the only way we have intensity is by being able to have rest periods and make sure that you recover between each effort. Otherwise, the intensity disappears. So it's going to be far more efficient, far more beneficial for you guys to be able to jump on the rower, jump on the exercise bike for, say, 15 minutes and do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off than it is for you to jump on your your, your cycling bike and go for an hour ride. Um, and be, be uh, being able to try and improve your fitness that way. So the other benefit of this, obviously, is that we're reducing the amount of time you can train. So you can spend the amount, the other, um, the other uh, time that you would normally spend training, doing strength training, doing flexibility, mobility work, doing other components of fitness that are going to be able to um, help with your performance. So that's important to, to note. So there's some stuff for you guys to implement. Um, I noticed we're going away from the actionable live stream, so I wanted to give you guys some stuff to be able to implement um, to be able to step up your training that you can actually start uh, cracking with. So remember, guys, uh, train hard, race harder. See you, guys.